It's um, New York State Executive Law Article 15A simply says that uh, we have to level the playing field when we procure or buy goods and services for New York State. And that's basically what, what we do. We put certain procedures in place to make sure that minorities and women who are ready, willing, and able to do business in New York State uh, do not have any artificial barriers put in their place when they bid on contracts or when a contract is actually let and, they're, and we're administering that, those contracts. We want to make sure that there is no discrimination in, in the marketplace as it relates to public contracting. So that's what we do. What is the uh, benefit of someone becoming involved in your program or participating in your program? Well, one of the benefits is that um, we do have certain goals set um, for our particular contracts. For example, New York State um, has a goal of 20%. So for discretionary spend, and, and probably should explain what discretionary spend is as opposed to non-discretionary spend, simply means that we have some flexibility on how we spend those dollars. Uh, non-discretionary um, means that we have to spend it to pay salaries, fringe benefits, and those types of things. So we don't have any, any flexibility on uh, using those dollars for, for contracting purposes to buy goods and services. So we identify what those dollars are, where they are, and we attach goals to them. So when a contract goes out, or when um, we have a solicitation that, that will go out into the public and we ask for our companies to um, give us a bid, we say, well, of that total contract amount, 20% of that should be subcontracted out with a minority or woman-owned firm who's been certified with the state uh, of New York. And there's a special uh, provision in uh, Executive Law Article 15A which says that there are certain criteria you have to meet to be a certified uh, minority or woman-owned firm. Now, you said at least 20%, but it could be more than 20% uh, if you find uh, people that you know, are able to bid and are qualified. You know, it's based, absolutely, it's based on availability. And so in the geographical region in which we have uh, companies located. For example, you may have more uh, woman-owned firms up in the North uh, Country than you will have minority firms. And uh, conversely, you'll have more minority firms in the urban centers in New York City area than you will have in, um, uh, in, in other parts of the country. So when you set goals, uh, those goals should reflect the availability of that uh, my, uh, the protected class member, the minority group, mm -hmm. or the woman, the non-minority female uh, group, it should reflect the actual availability within, um, within the respective geographical reasons, regions. And the reason for that is because we have to have a, uh, a very narrowly tailored uh, program to remedy discrimination that was uh, found in public contracting. And that's one way to do it. You just can't say, well, 20% across the board is 20% based on uh, geographical regions and whether or not there are, there are MNWBEs able to provide that widget or that service within that uh, marketplace. And so there was a um, disparity study that was done, the first one was done actually in 1992. And it all goes back to the history of uh, the MNWBE program for New York State. And incidentally, it started under Mario Cuomo, the mm -hmm. governor, um, the governor's, the current governor's father, right. who was the governor in New York State for about three terms right. from 1983, I think, to about 1992. Right. Well, in 1988, uh, which is when 15A originally was um, instituted, he um, adopted uh, this remedy for discrimination that was found in the workplace or found in, in, uh, in the public space for contracting. And a year after it was uh, adopted, there was a Croson study uh, not a Croson study, there was a Croson a Supreme Court ruling 
between the city of Richmond and and um, and Croson, a, a private contractor, and uh, the city of Richmond had a population of about fifty percent uh, that was African American, mm -hmm. yet only one percent of them were actually receiving contracts. So the city of Richmond said, "Well, uh, we're going to." assign 30% goals to all city contracts. Well, the Supreme Court said, well, where's the evidence that there's actual discrimination going on in the market? They had not done a disparity study, so the Supreme Court said, unless you provide that evidence, um, you cannot um, put in a race-conscious or a gender-conscious uh, remedial program to remove the discrimination. So their uh, set aside, MNWBE set aside program was uh, struck down. So th that impacted New York State. So 15A nearly did not get its start uh, because of that Croson study. So what uh, New York State had to do was commission its own study. disparity study because there was an injunction put against 15A uh, a year after it was originally adopted. And it took them about two years from 1990 to 1992 looking at um, all of the contracting that was occurring in the state to see exactly what was happening uh, in terms of how many are available and how many are we using. Very simple and within various market areas based on um, the commodity code. So uh, what we found out is that there was indeed discrimination occurring in New York State. So in 1992, the injunction was lifted and we were able to proceed and, and actually build a robust uh, program. So fast forward to <laughs> 2014. In 2006, we had to commission another study to because the original, the original law was about to sunset. And in order to, again, uh, give a state permission to put in um, a race conscious or a gender conscious program, uh, you've got to document it. And we were able to do that by looking at contracts that had been let across the state, the large, the large agencies between 2004 to um, 2008. And we found again that um, there was discrimination, even though we have approximately tw uh, about well over 30% of the companies in New York State are minority or women-owned. Less than 5% of them actually get state contracts. And the data showed that that was not happenstance. There's something going on. And a state cannot be a passive participant in racial, discrim racial discrimination or gender discrimination in how we let public funds because we're all public citizens. We all need equal access. So our uh, purpose is to remove those artificial barriers and make sure that we have a level playing field. What sort of a difference has your program meant for New York State? Um, that's a very good question. Um, what, what we have found um, just last year is that and when you look at the state fiscal year 12-13, we have spent about, as a state, uh, we've spent about $1.7 um, billion dollars, I think, let me just make sure I'm quoting that right, $1.4 billion we've spent with m and WBE statewide. And <coughs> um, that's a testament to the marvelous work that was done by Governor Cuomo and his staff, um, right. uh, Mr. Alfonso David, in making sure that there was a renewed emphasis placed in the agencies to work very hard to increase utilization of M and WBEs. So they spent 1.4 billion um, statewide between 2012 and 2013 for a participation rate of 21 percent. Now SUNY um, spent about 76 million dollars with M and WBEs uh, during that same time period at a participation rate of close to 17%, 16.4%. So we're working really hard to get to uh, that 20%. We've got some real nice strategies in place that I think will get us there. And we're excited, and that's one of the reasons I 
uh, was I welcomed the opportunity to speak to the public to let them know that we've got 64, even though we have 64 uh, campuses across the state, uh, 30 of them are state operated and those 30 state operated campuses are the ones which um, have 15A applied to it. So every campus has an MNWBE liaison attached to it and um, I encourage um, anyone who's interested in doing business contracting with the state to reach out to my office and I in turn will um, do an electronic or an introduction to the various campuses and let them know who they are. They can get a contact list and go out and knock on those doors and, and explain uh, to the buyers on our campuses exactly uh, what their um, statement of qualifications are, share their marketing strategies, um, the core competencies of that company, and why we should do business with them. And start building a business relationship with the buyers on our campuses. That's what I encourage. Now, you uh, said that businesses in New York State have to meet a uh, criteria. Could you explain what that uh, criteria is to our viewers today? Sure. So 15A says that if you want to be certified in New York State, mm -hmm. in order to be certified, you have to own your business. 51% uh, of it must be owned and controlled by you independently if you are a minority firm. And the minority uh, member, member group include African Americans, Hispanic, Southeast Asian, uh, South Pacific Asians, um, as well as Native Americans. And then you have um, the uh, non-minority female uh, group. So there's a certification department in Empire State Development Corporation um, or Empire State Development and what they do is vet your financial data. They look at how you operate your company. They look at how your company was capitalized. They want to know how long have you been in business. Usually if you've been in business for at least a year, you can apply for certification. If you are a company that's outside the state, we encourage you to first seek certification in your own state before applying for certification in New York State. You must also uh, not have a personal net worth that exceeds um, $3.5 million. And once you uh, can meet those tests, they'll go out and do an interview um, with you on site, but once you meet those that test or the, that criteria, and it's all online now, which is really great. There's a New York State contract system, again, that was put in place by Governor Cuomo's team, and it makes it a lot easier. Um, there has been some discussion about the length of time it takes to get certified, but mm -hmm. I would encourage a small business. Once, it's just like filling out your taxes. If you have everything nicely organized and you give it to them, uh, submit the documentation online the way they ask you mm -hmm. to, um, it usually takes a couple of months, two, three months. But if you don't, <laughs> it's gonna take a little bit longer. And you know, some small businesses have things in shoeboxes <laughs> as opposed to nicely organized or work with, and some of them can't really afford to work with a CPA or an attorney to help them get organized, but uh, some of them can just do it on their own. But there are some compliance management or MNWBE companies out there now that will work, work with smaller firms to help them get certified. And they're in the certification database. By the way, that certification database, there are 7,800 MNWBE companies that are certified in New York State. That is today. incredible. It's a great. It's and it's making, uh, having a positive economic impact. I believe so, I believe so. I mean, we set, not set aside, but we've identified close to $600 million for discretionary spend that we apply goals to.